down in the description below, I have a link to my new third channel, Realm of Geekdom, where I'm going to be uploading all of my classic podcasts, along with new episodes coming out very soon, where I'm going to have some crazy interviews, stuff that you've I promise you you're not expecting. Over there at Realm of Geekdom, the link is down below. Give me a subscription. Check out some of the shows we have on there. And there's tons more to come on that channel. Now, let's get to the video. Today's my birthday, but it doesn't matter because just because it's your birthday doesn't mean you can't work. And I certainly am, but at least I get to watch Dragon Ball for a living. Even though this Dragon Ball might not be the one I really want to watch, it's... Uh, I guess it's it's there. It's better than nothing, right? All joking aside, Super Dragon Ball Heroes Ultra God Mission Episode 8. Welcome to my review of this Heroes episode. Continuing on with this multiversal, multi-timeline tournament. Once again, a story arc that Dragon Ball, like Super, the movies, the manga, the anime. These are things that myself and many, 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 many of you... It's not a small amount. It's a lot of Dragon Ball fans want to see explored. The storyline concepts are and have always been significantly more interesting than anything we've seen in Dragon Ball Super as far as from a standpoint of really pushing the envelope and trying things that are unique, creative, and uh, new and fresh. And this episode continues that, but they are short 10-minute promotionals meant to promote a card game that the vast majority of us here in the West have never played. I have played it in Japan. It's fine. It's not like the best arcade game ever. It's fine. But because many of us here don't have access to it, it's not going to have the same impact that something else would have. But let's talk about it. Episode 8. So Demigra has arrived and is now taking the place of being the main villain of this arc over the two previous, well... One previous and one current Supreme Kai of Time, Kronoa and Ios, he is now the villain. Which, if you've been following Heroes, both the anime, the, the manga, the promotional manga, or even just the lore of it and the video games, Demigra's been a villain in Heroes for years and years and years. Since Demigra was introduced in Xenoverse 1, he's been a part of Heroes. It's part of that whole Mira and Toa, you know, demonic enemies thing that we've seen Heroes do you know, over and over again. So now he's taking his place once again as being the lead problem, the lead antagonist of Dragon Ball Heroes. Demigra taps into Dark Factor and transforms, and he's got like, not quite as long as Super Saiyan 3 hair, but like his arms are bigger, like his body is more, it looks disjointed, but it looks also more threatening. And of course, we gotta sell cards, so that's the idea behind this. Demigra goes right for Kronoa, but Super Saiyan Blue Goku is there to intercept and hits Demigra in the face with a right hand fist, but it didn't do anything. Of course not. <laughs> what do you expect? Demigra counterattacks with a shot to Goku's gut, and he is feeling the pain. Demigra starts to blast Goku with many little key balls, and then we cut over to Chilled, the grand, great, 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 great grandfather, or whatever, I don't know how many greats it is, I lost track, of Frieza, powering up, tapping into that dark energy. Vidro and Yamcha team up to try to take out Chilled. Can you believe that Yamcha is treated with more respect in Heroes than even in Dragon Ball Super? I'm, I'm serious, I mean, let's not even kid ourselves here in dragon ball super during the baseball episode they made yamcha literally into a meme the or he already was a meme the dead yamcha meme became part of the story and then in the tournament of power arc he's over here trying to get onto team universe 7 and he's made up into a joke so it's humorous to me that in heroes he's treated like an actual threat when nobody and i mean nobody believes that he stands a chance against these characters that are multiversal level, the vast majority of them here in Dragon Ball Heroes. So then they cut back to Goku and Demigra, and Goku is saved by Vegeta in typical Dragon Ball Z movie fashion. It's not quite the same thing. Vegeta's not over here saying, I'm going to be the one to defeat Kakarot like he did in the old Z movies. He's just showing up because he wants to fight, and he's in Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, a form that we haven't seen in a long, long time. Of course, that form was only a Dragon Ball Super anime form. The manga has something similar, albeit somewhat different. 
Uh, it's not quite the same thing as Blue Evolution, although there are similar properties. And I miss it. Like, I miss that sort of royal blue, um, you know, with the energy kind of pulsating off of it. I do miss that look. It's a great look for Vegeta and a great color. Upon seeing Vegeta, Supreme Kai of Time has a plan and telepathically asks Ios to distract Amigra while she formulates this plan. Then we cut to Trunks, who's duking it out and getting beaten up by the dark, dark factor cell, who's got a hell of a power, a perfect cell, of course. As always, the androids versus cell battle will never end, and quite frankly, I'm here for it, especially in Heroes. So they all team up and blast Trunks, and then guess what happens? This was the best moment of the episode for me. Future Gohan, with the one arm and everything, Future Gohan saves Trunks. This is so awesome, yo. Like, the Trunks TV special with Future Gohan and Trunks is a lot of people's favorite Dragon Ball product ever. I've heard some of you guys straight up tell me, like, no, that's like my favorite thing they've ever done. Which, it's dark as hell. And it's not for everyone, but I can understand why. And Future Gohan's a beloved character. So for Future Gohan to sit here and save Future Trunks is such a nice moment. You know what I mean? It's obviously done for nostalgia, but it's such a nice moment to see that. You know, the mentor and the student reuniting, although it's heroes, and Gohan actually doing something. Firing a Masenko to block the blast that Cell and the others try to hit Trunks with. And then we get a moment that I think a lot of Dragon Ball fans have been wanting for years. And I mean that genuinely. Future Gohan apologized to Trunks. Now, there's no reason for him to apologize because he was taken on both androids, had the balls to do it, went in there, got killed, but still did the best he could. And he's over here pissed because he thinks he was too weak. He even says, point blank, I'm the anger at my own weakness. Like, he's angry at his own weakness because he couldn't save the future. Trunks wound up saving the future, as we saw back in Dragon Ball Z episode 194, if you want to reference it. But Gohan is, like, remorseful about what happened. And like I said, it's not something that I think is necessary for Gohan's character, but Future Trunks being mad at his own weak, or Future Gohan, I'm sorry, being mad at his own weakness and kind of being pissed that he couldn't do what he wanted to do is very similar to how Gohan, when he fought Cell and didn't finish him off in Dragon Ball Z, and then Goku died when he teleported Cell to Kaio's planet, like when that happened, Gohan was pissed because he was like, damn, like I, I could have finished this guy off and because I didn't, my father died. It's very similar. It's still Gohan, although they're different Gohans. He still bears a lot of responsibility on himself, which I've talked about in other videos, specifically one I did with Jordan, which I might link at the end of this video for y'all to watch about Gohan and his character. And there's probably going to be more videos like this to come on the channel. But really, here he's apologizing because he joined the wrong side, and he was supposed to protect the other timelines, and instead he was on the wrong side. So we have the redemption of future Gohan, and... Hey, look, most of these Heroes episodes are crap. The fact that we got this moment kind of elevates this episode. It's just one little moment, but it elevates the importance of this episode up quite a bit. Gohan says that once again, he has to protect Trunks with his power. Referencing the history of Trunks special, whether it be the manga or the anime version. Same story here. Well... Not exactly the same. There are small differences, but it's the same idea. You get it. Then Trunks is like, you know what? I'll protect you too. Let's fight together. Amazing moment, dude. They play some really great music. Gotta give it up to the composer here. The music in this episode was stellar and perfect for this moment. It's like epic. Like, hey, we're getting a nice throwback to the Trunks special without it feeling forced. Even though all of Heroes feels forced sometimes. Uh, still, like, it, it, it feels that way. This actually mattered. Gohan and Trunks powering up and Trunks going into Super Saiyan God. Phenomenal, yo. Like, I love this shot of both of them side by side. I might actually... You know what? I'm going to make that the thumbnail for this video, I think. They cut back to Ios versus Demigra. And Demigra notes that Supreme Kai of Time is using space-time manipulation to trap Demigra. Now, I'm not sure if this is similar to, and I would presume it is somewhat similar, to Hit's time cage technique that he used against Jiren in Dragon Ball Super Episode 111. If you remember that, uh, he tried to use the effects of time-space to literally trap Jiren, 
and it looks like here it's the same thing except ios is probably way more proficient at using time space being a god as opposed to hit nevertheless i'm not saying it's the exact same move but it seems pretty close demigra laughs and uses his dark energy to just break it up and he powers up and it just just like what Jiren did, man, it's just not enough. Like, even the power of altering time space is not enough for these wacky Dragon Ball characters, you know, these OP characters. Just as Demigra is about to counterattack, here comes Vegito Blue returning for the first time in a long time and punches Demigra right in the face. Vegito Blue, Goku and Vegeta using Potara Fusion are ready to go. And that's your cliffhanger. Next time they do one of these, it's going to be Vegito Blue versus Demigra. The episode's called The Strongest versus The Deadliest, Unleashing Power Beyond Limits. So, can Vegito Blue get the job done in Super Dragon Ball Heroes God Mission? Ultra God Mission. When it comes to reviewing Dragon Ball Heroes and on the scale of Heroes characters, this is definitely one of the better episodes i'm sorry i meant to say heroes episodes not characters the when it comes to heroes by the heroes you know scale not by the dragon ball scale this does not measure anywhere near super especially not dragon ball or z but by the heroes standards i guess you can say it was not bad at all it was definitely a step up from other episodes because of the great moment with trunks and gohan and uh Still though, it's not really what I want from Dragon Ball, but hey, it's been it's been on the air now for like five years in Japan online, so it's probably not gonna end anytime soon. Anyways, y'all take care. I'll see you guys in the next video. Talk to you then.